So, uh, good uh, morning, good afternoon, and thanks everyone for making time to uh, be part of this session. Uh, Patrick Omiel is my name. I work with the Health, uh, HISP Uganda, Health Information Systems Program Uganda, as a DHIS2 implementer, and uh, specifically I support uh, development of uh, packages. And uh, so for, for, for this, I'm, I'm here to share with you uh, the, the processes and the experience that we go through as a remote package. And this should be really in consideration of uh, our plan to support development of community healthy data within DHIS2 uh, based on the global standards. So as, um, as a bit of background, uh, the, this initiative of developing packages started way back in 2017, of course, with support of partners. And uh, in the beginning, we're really looking at TB, HIV, malaria, immunization, uh, and then, of course, uh, RIM, NCH, and, uh, of course, the cause of death. And uh, over time, we've seen over 30 uh, countries uh, having these packages that we have developed, installed in their country uh, systems. And increasingly, we are seeing demands for these uh, packages. And, uh, and so we really working towards making sure we're able to expand this work. So just to try and help you understand where the community health uh, data fits in. As you can see highlighted, uh, we, um, it fits really where we have integrated uh, health service analysis because as you know, uh, community health data is cross-cutting across programs. And so that's where we think it's going to be uh, to really fit. And as you can see, this is so far what we have developed. We've so far developed immunization, HIV, TB, malaria, uh, COVID, and then of course uh, the RIM and CH. And again, for this package, for community health data, we will be um, starting with the first uh, uh, program and that is the RMNCH. So uh, then also whatever is in progress um, right now with this uh, development, uh, package development, as you can see for aggregate, we have uh, the community health information system as part of it, but there are these others, IDSR, rehab, NTD and NCDs. These are all uh, in progress. But uh, of course, on the, on the right side, you can see uh, the case-based or what we call in video uh, level uh, uh, development based on tracker. And here we have got malaria, uh, TB, surveillance, HIV, uh, and then of course, the, the VPD surveillance ongoing. So, so again, I already mentioned this, that uh, we have over 30, countries that have adapted and here to be more exact we have 39 countries that have adapted this package and here we're looking at really one or more country uh, having this package installed in their national HMIS. Um, so also we, 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 we think that uh, getting community health information data in the package really helped to, to provide um, the standards uh, for community health data and also uh, help to integrate community health data into uh, the routine uh, health management information systems. Yeah, so, it, so the way we've been doing this together is that, of course, we have got uh, the technical partners, uh, that's WHO, uh, UNICEF, and CDC, who have really been uh, working on developing the technical content, but also working on the standards. Um, uh, and the guidance that we use really as our preliminary uh, requirements to develop this package. And of course, based on those standards, uh, we generate requirements that we use to configure this package. And uh, then we go, of course, ahead and once we develop this package, we also do all the necessary uh, technical guidance that will help uh, uh, implementation. And then we also uh, work with uh, the his groups to make sure that this package can be installed in country. Of course, MOH is a, the core user of whatever we're doing, uh, although this is open for other people to use, but uh, 
MOH is a core uh, user of this. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we, 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 we uh, is a core user of this package. Mm -hmm. and, and so um, we definitely have to work with them to make sure that uh, uh, they're, they're able to get this running in their system but also that we are able to get lessons learned so that we can improve on our requirements. Uh, the his regional, uh, uh, regional offices and nodes are also very key because they are closer to uh, the users, the ministries of health. So they are the ones who work with the ministries of health to make sure that this is installed. And then of course, uh, the implementing partners work closely with the ministry and then the developing, I mean the funding partners help us to make sure we are able to actually go down and implement this. Uh, so in terms of the development life cycle, again, this life cycle is modular and uh, is uh, iterative. So, uh, but it all starts with um, the launching of the package. And so once uh, it's agreed that we need this package, need arises that need this package, uh, it's agreed and we say, let's get started to come up with a plan on how this should be done. And uh, then we go ahead, dive in, and start with the requirement gathering. And uh, once we have gathered requirements, we then go ahead and uh, uh, use those requirements to start with the configuration. And again, we just wanted to highlight here that uh, for community health information systems, we have started the process of configuration. We are at a stage of, of doing the configuration based on requirements that we have so far got. And uh, once we are uh, able to do the configuration of course we do testing and, and feedback and this can be internally uh, we get immediate feedback internally and then once we are good with what we have um, in terms of uh, uh, the testing and the feedback we then go ahead and we do the release and in for us to be able to release of course we have to make sure you have all the necessary documentation and then once we release and publish and then uh, the users can go ahead and do the, uh, the implementation. And again, here we can support that process of implementation where we can work with countries and end users to make sure they're able to install this package. And then once you have implemented, of course, you need to have some levels of maintenance and updates to make sure that uh, you are up to date with the core software of DHIS2, but also if we have any new changes coming within the package. But again, on the left side, like you can see, we have got lessons that we've learned. Uh, and uh, these lessons we can only get in the process of implementing. And that can actually later feed into the requirements. But also in the process of developing, uh, doing the configurations, we get a lot of inputs from the field. And, and, and that's very important at that stage because then we're able to have a product that um, can be owned, but also a product that has some of the requirements from the field. So, uh, so, so how will we learn from the field implementation? And, and this is very, very important, um, especially for uh, the community health information system that is very diverse, uh, it has different uh, workflows. Um, so, and, and again, it's important to appreciate the services uh, that are delivered in communities that are also quite diverse. Uh, health workers, the, the kind of report that they, they, they submit and the tools they use to collect data is also quite diverse. So these are all things that we will have to learn from. Uh, but uh, so far, uh, UNICEF has conducted consultations with a few countries uh, in developing the guideline. And we think that's very important that uh, right from developing of guidelines, we're able to have uh, countries consulted. And then we will, uh, from the University of Oslo side, there has been intense, um, uh, extensive uh, learning from health information systems. And, uh, but again, even with this knowledge and consultation, we will go ahead and uh, test this package and, uh, and then do piloting. And that's in 2021. And there we'll have proper user acceptance testing with the community health workers. We will engage at a community, I mean at district level uh, in workshops. And then of course, uh, piloting also video level uh, data to aggregate. 
So this is really how we we'll try and make sure that uh, we're able to properly implement this, but most importantly, that we learn along the way, uh, appreciating the challenges of the diversity of community health information system. So, so how do we develop this package? Uh, I've, I've kind of touched a little in the process of, um, I mean, in the development life cycle. Uh, but uh, when it comes to um, uh, the actual development, of course, uh, there, there are specifics, and that's what I would want to highlight here, that uh, we start with focusing on the inputs, data capture of the inputs. So once we have those guidelines, we, um, the requirements are very clear, we're able to start focusing how do we use this, I mean, how do we uh, develop the part for data inputs? And that one, uh, we're able to then, based on the requirements, we're able to go ahead and customize the, the part that focuses on uh, data inputs. Again, typical for DHIS is focusing on what kind of data elements you have here, how is it disaggregated, what kind of options, and all that metadata that's relevant for, for inputs. And once we have that, we're able to review test and be sure that it's able to capture the data that we need. And then we then go ahead and also look at specific requirements for analysis. And here we're able to, based on, um, and generate some mockups, uh, visuals, uh, that uh, other analytical outputs that is kind of expected out of the system. So we use that to develop the analytic items and then create dashboards. And then also generate some dummy data that helps us to, uh, to further configure this and test to make sure that's all working well. And after that, of course, we do documentation to, to accompany this package. And this documentation usually includes uh, the installation guide, the design documents, and, the, and of course, the, the training templates or materials. And then we also go ahead to do the uh, the metadata translation using uh, transfix, transfix. And then, of course, once everything's done, we can export this uh, into a format that can be installed. And uh, the format that we've been using is really JSON format. And then go ahead, publish, and release the package for, uh, for implementers and uh, users to, to take on from there. Um, so, once that is again, once we're done with the development and we have released, of course, implementation comes in. And uh, this is just a quick sort of process that we go through, uh, or, or what uh, core users would go through if they wanted to adapt this package with support from uh, University of Oslo or through the HISP uh, uh, nodes. And, uh, and so, so the process to get that technical assistance, of course, requires that um, a request be made through University of Oslo. And then if um, uh, they have support for this, they're able to, to make up a team uh, uh, to go and support and, 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 and offer this technical assistance to the, uh, the user or the country. And then of course, they have to develop terms of reference uh, prior to a visit. And then they go ahead and do the visit. Uh, the visit usually lasts about two weeks. Uh, but this can be extended uh, if uh, there's need for more support. And then when they go in the country, of course, they have to have entry meetings with the stakeholders. They have to then quickly do rapid assessment of DHIS2 implementation to be sure that um, what the way it's developed, the way it's implemented can support these packages that we are bringing on. And then we do indicator mapping, specifically when you're dealing with the dashboard package, and then we uh, also go ahead and do the installation of this package and uh, any other uh, app, uh, app custom applications that come with these packages. And then we do training of trainers because we're not able to train everyone. We pick a few people, we do trainers, of trainers and then uh, we then debrief uh, the stakeholders and then we exit the country. Uh, so for development, uh, so lessons that we've learned in development, um, and uh, on the left side, of course, really we want to start by what has worked well for us. Uh, over time, we have uh, really uh, developed a process that we think we can reuse, uh, and even resources that we think we can reuse in the process of developing this package. So um, a lot has been learned in that, and uh, 
a lot has really worked well for us in that, in that area. Uh, but also the collaborative development with the field implementers. Um, I happen to be one of the field implementers who is now actively uh, supporting the development of these packages. Uh, so that's really also very, very important that capacity can be built to actually uh, support the uh, development of the package uh, and starting the implementers. Uh, documentation has also greatly improved and has been standardized. We've also seen uh, that we can rapidly develop um, uh, packages uh, with the shorter cycles and a good example is really in the, with the COVID, uh, we're able to quickly and rapidly develop package uh, that was uh, used, I mean, that was released and is now being used for uh, the response. Uh, of course, on the left side, the uh, really areas that we think we can improve, of course, is with the requirement gathering most times, not most times, but some of, uh, sometimes we, we find challenges with uh, the requirement gathering process. The information can be a bit little scanty and this can actually delay the whole development process. Uh, we also would also want to improve on our release cycle so that it's aligned with the core DHIS2. As we get new releases of core DHIS2, we would also want to make sure that the package is, uh, packages are released that are compatible to these new versions. Uh, the last one, which is really, I think, more important is uh, really to strengthen, uh, we need to strengthen the feedback loops from the field uh, implementation. Uh, really focus on feasibility, acceptability of this package. And then that we think can feed into our development process. Um, for implementation, and again, this I speak with a bit of authority because I'm, I'm an implementer. Uh, really a lot has worked well uh, for us because uh, uh, we've seen great improvement um, in data access and use by programs, really programs that install this package really you feel that they are now able to actually easily access the data and use their data. Uh, we've also seen in the process of implementation that we've sort of extended support uh, for DHIS2 because um, uh, beyond the package. And uh, again, this experience really uh, coming from the field because sometimes you go to install the package and you find the need is beyond the package. So you have to do a little more to just help them maybe look into their server configurations, maybe look into uh, their general customization of, uh, of the tools that they use to collect data. Uh, this has also sort of influenced and, um, and uh, influenced the process of review of, um, of the tools uh, to try and align to standards. And a good example, of course, we see was in Uganda, where there was HMIS review. And, uh, and, and so with the package coming in, that sort of influenced the changes that were made in that uh, in, in sections, especially for the EPI program. And, and uh, we also saw a good example in Madagascar where uh, once we shared this package with them, they realized that there was a lot that was lacking and they went ahead also to make some reviews of their HMIS. So we see this is already influencing changes on the HMIS and trying to make sure it's aligned to the standards. Um, of course, uh, we're seeing a lot of emerging needs, which we think is really on the positive side, to integrate data and to improve analysis and use. Yeah, so once we put this package and we, we do a mapping of uh, indicators and see the gaps within their system, then you see the, the need to integrate data because sometimes you find data is in other systems. So, and, and this is really good because to improve data analysis and use. Uh, we've also, and this is just to note that we, we saw fairly uh, adequate infrastructure and HR at national and subnational level where data uh, is entered and uh, reported. And that's also a good one. Yeah. So, on the, of course, on the other side, on the left side, um, uh, the things that we, we think we need to continue improving, of course, is uh, country coordination and leadership. Uh, it's very, very important that. As we go take this package down, that country, the country is well coordinated and we have strong leadership to, to, to make uh, this work. We also note the, the need for uh, clear plans and budgets to support rollout at sub national level. 
uh, once we install this package at national level, we, that's where we end. But uh, it would be nice uh, for countries to have these plans to take this package at national level. Uh, again, along the implementation, we noted, of course, the limitation of HMIS, which I already hinted on. Um, and so we are not able to fully configure the packages uh, uh, and then the apps. And uh, again, this I we looked at it in a positive sense that it was able to actually influence uh, the HMIS review, and uh, which is good because then people are trying to then align. Uh, Partner-driven dashboard, we note there are quite a number in the, in the field, and uh, this sometimes creates a feeling that we are bringing more of this dashboard, even when we know that we are trying to just enhance our DHIS to, to have more uh, uh, features for analytics. Sometimes I feel like uh, introducing a new dash dashboard, and uh, that has been a, a bit of a problem. Uh, we also note that uh, the capacity enhancement is still needed in the country uh, for DHIS2 uh, so that uh, they can support the core DHIS2 but also support these packages and of course limited resources support translation of a kit uh, to lang other languages uh, much of this is in English and a bit in French uh, but yeah it would be nice to have other languages but also then for French to have uh, most of the content translated uh, so looking ahead we uh, so we, we really would want to really see uh, support for adoption of, um, adoption of um, uh, integrated harmonized HMIS to include uh, community health data. Uh, we would want to see uh, improvement in the field to headquarter learning and incorporate country uh, implementation experience. This is very, very important. Uh, we think this will actually also improve um, data flow uh, between communities, health facilities, up to higher levels uh, of, of health, health systems. So, and, 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 and this is very, very important that we keep looking there to make sure it works. Um, we also want to sort of have a little more focus on individual level data. As you, uh, as you know that with individual level data, you're able to have more powers uh, in terms of analysis. So, and, and so we want to also introduce this and specifically for, for, for at community level where we think uh, EHIS tracker uh, can actually help to collect data. And then also, of course, have this aggregated um, uh, into the community indicators for HMIS. And then of course, we want to make sure we have alignment of donors, uh, partners, the ministry towards adoption of this uh, health standards and indicators to streamline reporting. So thank you and uh, over to you Alice and, uh, uh, and to the audience for any questions. Thank you very much. So hi, uh, I am Alfredo Mushanga uh, from Mozambique. I, I'm the lead developer at, at South Digitus, uh, he's Mozambique. And I also work with DGS2 uh, implementation. I'm also DGS2 implementer. And during this presentation, I will be sharing our experience uh, related with the work that we are, done, we are doing uh, based on the CUNIT health uh, information systems. And here I will, I will be sharing our experience uh, based on the Africa Lusophone uh, countries. And during this presentation, I will have uh, four steps. The first one, I will be a, a brief uh, introduction to the health information systems uh, in the Africa uh, Lusophone region. I will, next after that, I will talk about the, 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 the similar and different points between the community health information systems and the global uh, health management uh, information systems. And after that, I will talk about our experience and final about the lesson learned and other points that, that we got uh, in the field. So the DGS2 was adopted by the Minister of Health of the five uh, Lusophone countries. I'm talking about Guinea-Bissau, that was the first one adopting 
uh, in 2011, uh, Mozambique came next, Angola, Cape Verde, and finally, we got uh, Saint Tome and Prince uh, joining the community on 2019. And Guinea Bissau and Mo Mozambique and Angola, they are already implementing uh, community health data. Guinea Bissau is, is using the aggregated approach data. <clears throat> and the uh, Mozambique and Angola, they, 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 they focus on individual level uh, data. And of course, because they started at different moments, they have they are currently at different uh, implementations uh, uh, stage. And what we got uh, based on our field work is that all uh, the countries are implementing their information systems based on the community uh, intervention. They have the several actors that are doing the uh, community uh, activity. I'm talking about the, the community health workers, the activists, the matrons, the traditional beef at attendants. All of them are involved on this process of getting uh, data and addressing service uh, to the uh, community. And all of them are doing it based on a standard procedures. And these standard procedures uh, are, are tolerated by different uh, organizations or by different entities uh, from country to country. For example, in Mozambique, we have the APS and the APS, uh, the, they help the CHW uh, at, at Mozambique, they, but they, they are under the Minister of Health. While in Angola, we have a DECOS, they are also the community health workers, but they are coordinated by the Ministry of State uh, administration. So as you can see here, we have the same uh, activity being done by two different uh, entities. So this behavior uh, forced us to start the best approach to implement uh, the home health information system, assuming that we are dealing with different uh, kinds of, of organizations. And when we're talking about the electronic side of these systems, we found out that they exist several uh, softwares uh, collecting and processing data. And in the, the main countries, like the major countries, we have more uh, tools to do data collections, but we have few tools to do data uh, 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 analysis. For example, uh, in Mozambique, uh, is used ODK and Comcur, and in Angola, is being used uh, ODK and COP uh, are collect. And all uh, these platforms are managed and maintained by implementing pa uh, partners with a very little intervention of the minus of health teams. There exist a lot of, of electronic uh, uh, tools, but they are only being used at, at the local uh, sites. This, this information or the information collected at this level that doesn't flow to the national uh, level. So this is a very common uh, uh, point that we found here, where we have the Minister of, of the, the Minister of, of Health doing a duplicated work to collect the same information that the, the implementing partners are already uh, implementing at, 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 at the site. So based in all this uh, uh, summer that I, I made here, we we design. Uh, and implementation uh, approach. And this is an integrated uh, imp implementation approach. And we, we have here uh, three uh, main uh, stages or three main domains. And where we have here at the left side, <clears throat> we have the current community tools that they're using at the community right now. For example, we have ODK, we have COBO tools, and we have different uh, systems. And here at the national level, we have the DHS2 based community health information system. So it means that we developed a community health information system based on DHS2 using the DHS2 guidelines to develop the community health information systems. And what we, we did here is to look at all these systems that are, are, are collecting data at the local sites 
and we, we, we selected the main uh, indicators. So the MOH selected the main uh, indicators and these indicators uh, are the pre selected to be part of this DHS2 basis community health uh, information system. And finally, we have here the routine health information system that is normally being used and it's all a read part of this uh, ecosystem. And we didn't touch <clears throat> with this to implement uh, our solution. So basically, the, part, the, the implementing partners implement the system. They are not forced to use DHS2, of course, because they have different systems that are being used. They, they keep using the, the system, but we are uh, implemented a service, we implemented an interoperability service that collects data from these systems to the DHS2 based uh, common health information system. And basically, here is taken all uh, essential info to this side. In Angola, for example, we are taking <clears throat> or we are planning to, to take individual data. Uh, for COBO uh, uh, collects, and this data is going to be taken individual to the community health uh, information systems. And then the main indicators, the main aggregated indicators are going to be created and sent to the uh, routine health information systems. It means that here at this site, as we have more people are accessing these systems, we are just going to have aggregated data and this data is going to be uh, accumulated or aggregated based on health facilities or other aggregation criteria that are, are, are defined by the Ministry uh, of, of, of Health. So having the same data that started here at, at the local site flowing until the routine health inf information systems, we have all conditions to do an integrated uh, data analysis. And, and this is the, 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 the situation. So implementing this approach, we have here some points that uh, are guaranteed or we uh, implemented uh, an effort to guarantee the sustainability uh, of the community health uh, information system. Because as I mentioned before, DHS2 is being used uh, as the base for this system. And the MOH, they are already implementing DHS2. So they know properly how to create the tools, how to create the indicators, how to do the user management and other uh, DHS2 related activities. So it means that they already have people prepared to work with the community health uh, information systems. Then we have the second point that is the governance. Uh, because the system is, is going to be integrated, the MOH has the entity that have to manage or to regulate this, this process, have more space now to talk about policies, to talk about roles that have to be expected when the, the implementing partner uh, implementing uh, uh, tools at the community side. And finally, because of this uh, interconnectivity with the routine health information system, it, here is open a space to also have uh, an interconnection with other systems, as logistic uh, systems and human resource uh, systems. For example, uh, in Mozambique, where uh, is implemented uh, and, and interoperability between uh, the logistic system and this data is already at the routine health information systems. So. With the community information uh, data, with data coming for the community health information system, it's possible here to do uh, a complex uh, analysis using the same tool at the same time. And this is something that is very important and the Ministry of, of Health are taking advantage of this uh, implementation. So in terms of, learn, of lessons learned, the first thing that we learned is that with this approach, we change the way has their organizations uh, are seeing or, or were seeing the, the current health information system. Because before it was seen as a standalone system that going to flow in a different way on a different uh, approach of the normal, I can say normal, I'm talking about the health management system, but about uh, is different of the HMIS. So with that, 
we found out that with this uh, integration is going to be applied the same approach to make the all health information systems uh, strong, not only one side or, or, or another side. The second point is related with the way has the actors have benefit uh, of the community health uh, information systems. For example, the national and local supervisors, now they have possibility to have a streamlined, a streamlined data visualization because they will have data uh, rated at the same repository and then they can create combined indicators. Uh, the health workers at health facilities because uh, they before they were using uh, the normal, I, I'm saying normal, when I say normal, I mean the, 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 the current health management uh, information system, but because they already use uh, this, this system, with this implementation, they will, are going to take advantage of the current health information data in order to, to make a better tracking of the, of the community service. And with that, they have better uh, ways to take uh, decisions based on the information that, that, that is connected. And the last point here is related with the data analysis at the bottom side. Something very important that is being uh, applied is the data visualization from the community health workers. You know, tools are being implemented at the community uh, side in order to have uh, reports being uh, produced and used at the community uh, side. On this way, the community health worker will have or have a possibility to see not only the data that he collected, but he can also do some comparisons with the data that is collected by, by the other community health workers around the zone that he is or around the area that he is uh, 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 located. So basically this is the, the, the what I had to, 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 to present and thank you. Thank you Alfredo for, for this very nice presentation. Uh, so for any questions, do not hesitate to go on the community of practice. I think we have time to reply to a uh, few of them actually. So um, Patrick, I have a question for you. So we have one participant who is asking whether there are any connections between the Uganda DHIS to HISP and the One Health various initiatives. Yes, uh, we uh, HISP Uganda uh, at some point uh, Yes, his Uganda was uh, has been supporting uh, uh, the development of DHIS2 for zoonotic, and specifically it was uh, really to in line with that agenda of One Health. Uh, so they, they had an implementation that they were that they made it through with support from CDC. So they've been supporting uh, that, and I think that is still ongoing. I, I personally have not been working directly with that project, but I know that we've been supporting that. Thank you. I have another question actually for the, still for you, Patrick. Uh, for the CHIS package, is there a sample for Uganda only for the moment? Because the content of the activity package is often different from one country to another. Uh, did I get that clearly? Because um, we, we, we are yet to get, uh, we, we, are, we are just in the process of development. If you saw my presentation, uh, we've just started supporting. Uh, uh, we are in the process, we've just got all the requirements we need uh, with, the, with the guidance that we got, and now we are in the process of uh, developing this package. So, uh, so we, do, we have not yet made any releases of, uh, of this Community Health Information Systems package. And as soon as that is out, we'll let you know. Thank you so much. And then we'll have one last question for Alfredo. Um, Alfredo, who manages the A2D interoperability service? And what does it take to keep this service running? Thanks, Alice. Uh, 
to the uh, uh, service is a service that uh, East Mozambique uh, developed in order to to connect DHS2 with different uh, uh, systems. So, uh, so five is, is a service that is managed by by by, by East Mozambique, but it is is a, is, a, is a open source uh, service, and it's and it it help uh, this process of getting data uh, from the, the 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 different systems uh, to the DHS2 and to have this service running. Basically, we, we focus uh, uh, we focus on the uh, source uh, systems because we have ODK, for example. We have one service uh, getting data for ODK. So we focus on ODK, we do the configuration and the data is automatically taken uh, from one side to, 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 to other. So basically, this is a service that is, is available and, and different actors or different organizations can use this service to, to, to make this uh, connection between DHS2 and other systems. Sorry, I was muted. Thank you so much. Um, I will actually have one last question since we have a few minutes left. Uh, we have a participant who is asking that, so basically you said that over system can be integrated directly into the HMIS system, sorry. Um, is there any interoperability interoperability, sorry, layer that helps to connect these over systems to DHS2? Yes, yes, yes. We do have uh, a layer that basically uh, in all these countries, we, we've, we, we created uh, an interoperability layer. And this layer is not uh, only for, for, for the current health information system, because we have different uh, systems that want to send or receive data for the, the main HMIS. So what we did is to create a layer that is able to, to, to receive this data. And what we did for, for the COMS Health Mission System is a mapping where we map it uh, based on the structure and we send data to the, the system. So we created a layer uh, to, do the, to do this connection. Thank you so much, Alfredo. So, we're going to end the session here. So thank you to all our participants. I see that we are 56 in total, which is great. Um, Alfredo, Patrick, do not hesitate to go to um, the COP to reply to all the questions that we have there so that we keep the discussion continuing. And also this session has been recorded. So um, we will inform you all once the recording is available. So thank you so much to everyone and hope to see you soon in another session. Have a nice afternoon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.